You'd think if you want more performance from a gaming laptop, you'd just get a higher spec one, right? I mean, surely an RTX 4090 laptop chip will always outperform a measly RTX 4060 laptop chip, right? Well, you'd be wrong. This Acer Helios Neo 16, complete with an RTX 4060 laptop GPU, is faster than this Asus Zephyrus G14, complete with an RTX 4090 laptop GPU, in almost every game. Don't believe me? Well, here's those two in Cyberpunk. The Neo 16 is running nearly 10 FPS faster and 20 FPS faster in the 1% lows. Microsoft Flight Simulator? 20 FPS average. Rainbow Six Siege? 50 FPS average. Seriously, so why? Well, let me explain and in turn help you pick what spec is right for your next gaming laptop. The first and I think biggest reason is all to do with thermals and power. Laptops are a, have a finite space with certain constraints that desktops generally don't have. That being size, weight and sort of noise as well. It doesn't really matter that your GPU is a foot long and weighs as much as a baby because it's just getting slapped inside a case and left on the floor or on your desk. The size and weight doesn't really matter. A laptop, on the other hand, needs to be slim enough to fit in your backpack and light enough for you to want to carry it around in said backpack. A machine like the G14 is a slim, sleek and elegant machine that weighs just 1.7 kilograms. The Helios Neo 16 that I mentioned is a thicker, heftier machine weighing 2.7 kilograms or a full kilo more. Most of that went into a heftier cooling package, which allows that 4060 laptop chip to stretch its legs a lot more than the 4090 laptop in the G14. There's actually two points here, thermals and power. The former is pretty simple. The less thermal mass, the harder it is to keep the chip cool. The fans have to work harder and be louder, making them a, a louder experience, and you just can't get as much performance out of the chip as it just gets too hot. The latter point is a lot more complicated, although very much related. These chips all have a TGP figure, that being total graphics power. That's the maximum that the chip can draw, where generally speaking, the more power, the more performance, but obviously the more heat. Now, obviously as well, if the chip is overheating, it has to cut back on how much power it's drawing and therefore cut back on how much performance it's delivering. But the thing is, the thinner laptops, regardless of general cooling ability or you know how cool it is in your room or whatever, generally can't draw as much power as the larger ones by design. That is nicely demonstrated in this Shadow of the Tomb Raider chart. The Schenker Vision 16 Pro I tested had an RTX 4070 laptop chip, as did the XMG Pro 15. And yet, the Vision 16 Pro is at the bottom of the chart, and the Pro 15 is up at the top. Over 30 FPS faster in both average and 1% low results. Why? Well, that's at least partially down to the TGP rating. The Vision 16 Pro can, at best, flow 95 watts through that 4070. The SMG Pro 15, on the other hand, can draw up to 140 watts through that 4070. That's 47% more power available to the Pro 15, and while it only delivered 23% more performance with that power, you can see just how differently two very similarly spec machines can perform. The other variable is a bit harder to pin down without benchmark results, but in short, it's what CPU you have. Now, this depends a lot on the games you play. Some titles, like Cyberpunk, don't seem to be too CPU limited in these sorts of situations, whereas a game like Microsoft Flight Simulator seems to care a fair bit more about what chip you've got. The AMD chips that I've tested seem to perform significantly worse than Intel's latest offerings, 
to the point where two very similarly sized machines, the XMG Focus 16 and Core 16, perform wildly differently to the tune of 20 FPS average. The most stark contrast though is in the more esports titles like Rainbow Six Siege. The Core 16 offers a full 120 FPS less than its Intel spec relation, the Focus 16. That is an incredibly significant different, difference, despite things like the TGP being the same. It certainly seems like the 13700HX and 13900HX are your best choice right now, at least for gaming and from my relatively limited sample size. Just to show you that difference in fantastic detail, Hitman 3's built-in benchmark rather helpfully lets you split out the CPU and GPU performance during the same test. Here are the CPU results from both the Core 16 and the Focus 16. The 13900HX in the Focus 16 ran at nearly 150 FPS, at least on average, where the 7840HS in the Core 16 couldn't hit 120 FPS average. That's 25% more performance, a, a pretty significant difference for otherwise pretty equal machines. So long story short, on the graphics front, save your money and get the most powerful 4060 laptop you can find. There are of course some caveats to that, namely if you're after, what you're after is a desktop replacement style machine that trades some, or often most, of its portability for cooling potential. Then it actually might be worth getting a higher end chip. Or actually conversely, if you want a thin and light machine, that Zephyrus G6, uh, G14 does get beaten by any moderately thick machine, but if we look at my Fortnite results, you see that it is handily outperforming this Core 16, a machine that is drawing up to 15 watts more power. The larger GPU, that 4090, is considerably more efficient at producing performance than that 4060 chip. That is a somewhat extreme example, especially in the cost difference, but hopefully you get the point. So we've talked about the CPU and GPU, but what about the rest of the machine? Well, I'll start with the related components, that being RAM and storage. For RAM, I would get 16 gigabytes if you're on a budget, or 32 gig otherwise. The higher the speed, generally the better, although I don't think there's an insane amount of performance loss between, say, 5600 mega transfers per second and 4800, at least on these sorts of chips and machines. Storage wise, I would want at least one terabyte, and ideally a spare M.2 slot to drop into more storage later. If that isn't there, then depending on your budget anyway, it might be worth looking at someone like XMG who will let you customize your spec before buying and drop two terabytes in there instead. As for the display, that one seems to be trending more towards 1440p and 1600p displays. Honestly, I don't really understand why, because these machines really can't offer anywhere near enough performance to enjoy that resolution, especially at high refresh rates, but naturally I would look for a high refresh rate panel at least. Ideally, it would have a good response time, although you'll need to find someone who's actually tested that, ideally with one of my open source response time tools, which are available at osrtd.com if you're interested. But anything with an average less than the refresh rate window is generally good enough. Brightness is a more is better metric. Around 250 nits is kind of just enough, and between 4 and 500 is being a pretty decent panel. Of course, if you're interested in doing creative work, it might also be worth considering the color gamut coverage and accuracy, although again, you're mostly going to need to look at reviews to find those figures. More recently, if you don't mind a slightly thicker machine, you might get the option of a mechanical keyboard. This Core 16 has one, and it's fantastic. It is a 95 euro option on this model, but I mean, at least if you get a chance to try one, I would highly recommend it. There are a few other things that I can't give you much help on here, specifically things like the typing feel, the trackpad usage, noise, and heat dissipation. 
For those things, you have to find some reviews. Of course, all of this comes back to your budget. If you only have a bit of cash, you're likely to be limited to whatever you can find at that price point rather than having your pick of the lot. But hopefully the inf this information will still be valuable in helping you save some cash and picking the best machine within your budget. Of course, if you've got cash to spare, I hope it's still been useful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below and I'll link to some of my favorite laptops in the description as well if you're interested. Otherwise, if you want to stay up to date on these videos, including more laptop reviews, in fact, I have another one coming out very shortly, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. I also have a whole load of laptop reviews already up on the channel, so I'll leave those on the end cards if you're interested. And like I said, if you do want to check out my open source response time and latency testing tools, those are available at osrtt.com. Otherwise, that's kind of it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.